welcome to this class on neuroscience of human movement in this class we'll discuss other disorders of basal ganglia that means disorders other than parkinson's disease so so in this class we'll discuss uh specifically hyperkinetic disorders in particular uh, huntington's disease and uh, balism and other disorders such as dystonia tardive dyskinesia sydenham's chorea wilson's disease and atidosis huntington's disease right is a genetic disorder is a hereditary disorder and is autosomally dominant that means what if one of the parents has the disease the child has a 50% chance of getting this disease right the fortunately the gene responsible for uh, causing this disease has been identified this is the mutation of the hunting tin gene in uh, chromosome 4 that uh, causes a higher number of trinucleotide repeats right the occurrence is about uh, 5 to 10 per 100000 so 5 to 10 per 1 years right symptoms are uh, choreiform movements dance like movements choreiform uh, dance like so this of course shares the root with what is called as choreography right so like you see in movies choreography means what dance related to dance right so choreiform dance like movements so these individuals when they make movements it looks as if they are dancing right and eye movements are abnormal and usually this also is accompanied by other non-motor symptoms such as depression and impairment of cognitive function although the exact details of the non-motor functions or dysfunctions have not been understood the motor form has been documented relatively well right and it turns out that in later stages of the disease a uh, hypokinetic uh, form right and akinesia and rigidity form a phenotype involving rigidity and uh, akinesia is developed and that leads ultimately to death usually death happens after about 15 to 20 years after onset right and it turns out that the number of this trinucleotide repeat determines when the person is going to get the disease right if this number is below 35 this is uh, relatively normal and if it is greater than or equal to 36 there is a higher chance of early onset above 50 I mean, this is just a ballpark number above 50 repeats of this trinucleotide repeat usually signals that the person will develop what is called as juvenile Huntington's disease that is what I have called as JHD juvenile Huntington's disease. So, in some cases these uh, children develop disease at around the age of 12, 13 so very early onset uh, disease this is very different from the original discussion this is very different from the original description made by uh, Huntington in his paper right and it turns out that uh, with uh, generations as the generations progress the onset happens earlier so if in one generation the onset happens at 40 years then in the next generation it turns out that the number of trinucleotide repeats increases so if the father gets the disease at around uh, 40 years the child has a chance of getting the disease at around 35 say for example or 38 depending on the number of trinucleotide repeats and in children with jhd it turns out that there is an actual shrinkage of striatum and an enlargement of cerebellum this is a maladaptation this is an adaptation due to pathology this leads to a situation where the person does not this child does not go through the choreiform stage and directly reaches rigidity so in other words people in whom the disease sets in at an early age right like in the case of juvenile Huntington's disease it turns out that uh, these people have a higher chance of directly going to the rigidity form without going through the chorea form right, without going through the dance like chorea uh, symptom of uh, 
typical of this disease. Although the specific uh, gene and the chromosome and the particular uh, molecular details have been identified still a lot of research is needed to further understand this. Let us remember that uh, in comparison with Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease and its pathophysiology are relatively poorly understood right. Please do read the most recent uh, article on this topic uh, in nature when Huntington's disease comes early 30th May which is just a few days ago right uh, where the details of this is discussed and there are a few other accompanying articles that I suggest you read right. So, what exactly is happening in this disease what pathway is affected it turns out that Huntington's disease involves selective degeneration of the indirect pathway. So, that means what? the neurons from the striatum to the GPE right are affected. This leads to a situation where uh, the subthalamic nucleus is inhibited to a greater extent thus diminishing the subthalamic nucleus input to GPI right. Let us remember that the subthalamic nucleus actually is exciting the globus pallidus internal segment that means in the absence of uh, the subthalamic nucleus excitation the amount of inhibition let us remember this is tonic and this is also tonic right. So, this means a situation is developed in which the amount of inhibition that is received by the thalamocortical neurons is reduced because of this reason what happens is that there is an increased excitation at the cortex level right, leading to unwanted movements being performed unwanted dance like choreform movements being performed right. Uh, however, this model is too simplistic there are uh, specific cases when this model uh, cannot explain uh, the actual details right. So, let us remember that this model can only do so much justice a lot more research is required for an actual deeper understanding of the pathophysiology of this disease. Then the case of hemibalism or balism if balism happens in one side of the body that is called as hemibalism. So, a unilateral form of balism is called as a hemibalism this is happening usually due to a dysfunction of subthalamic nucleus of the basal ganglia. So, this means if for whatever reason the subthalamic nucleus is knocked out then what happens is unwanted movements are produced why because the subthalamic nucleus is tonically exciting the GPA right in this picture. So, this is happening so this is a so if uh, the subthalamic nucleus is knocked out that means what that means the tonic uh, excitation received by GPA which is tonically inhibiting the thalamocortical neurons is reduced that means that the output of GPA is reduced, but the output of GPA is inhibitory in nature or balism or hemibalism leads to a situation where there is going to be unwanted movements. So, the exact reasons why the subthalamic nucleus neurons are knocked out maybe due to multiple reasons metabolic abnormalities stroke whatever brain injury ALS several causes hyperglycemia neoplasm several causes could uh, lead to selective uh, degeneration or selective death of neurons in the subthalamic nucleus right. What are the symptoms the symptoms are flailing ballistic and undesirable movements of the limbs usually what happens is that uh, balism and hemibalism involve violent out of his movements between the shoulder girdle and the hip girdle like you would see in Bollywood dance right. When you watch a Bollywood uh, song what you see is that there is violent that means very fast out of his movements of the shoulder girdle and the hip girdle right. This uh, leads to a very violent and unwanted and very difficult disability for patients of course in the movies this is fun to watch but in the lives of people this is really horrible because all the time they will have to be going through this right cause a serious disability for the person who is affected by this particular disease right why is this happening once again due to death of uh, neurons in the subthalamic nucleus then dystonia this is an undesirable amount of muscle tone then required right. So, this leads to a situation of abnormal posture and many times 
rigidity right. So, why is this called the hypothesis is that this is caused due to abnormal synaptic plasticity in the basal ganglia. Uh, in the then the question is how exactly is basal ganglia even implicated in this disease. Actually some forms of uh, dystonia respond to dopamine replacement therapy. Then the question is is it somehow related to Parkinson's disease. Uh, in fact, the truth is that the exact link of uh, how basal ganglia is linked to dystonia remains uh, a mystery. We actually do not understand. Uh, uh, the pathophysiology or the connection between basal ganglia and dystonia. One particular form of dystonia is of course, writer cramp or uh, focal dystonia for example, in uh, musician uh, related uh, dystonia. This person can do practically everything using the same effector, but the moment he is going to perform a well practiced task right. So, it is a task specific thing a uh, overly practiced task then that movement is affected. This is called as musician's dystonia right. Uh, relatively rare sit condition, but a debilitating condition of uh, this very poor understanding of why this happens, what are the details, how to treat this, what are the, the so um, and the exact uh, relationship to basal ganglia is also relatively poorly understood. Another disease is tardive dyskinesia right. In this case what happens is there are involuntary and uh, repetitive movements that are caused usually as a side effect of uh, neuroleptic medications right and uh, dopamine supersensitivity. So, in other words that is upregulation of uh, dopamine receptors right. This leads to a situation where the person is frequently performing that kind of movements grimacing you know like that like striking out the tongue or you know smacking of the lips or various other unwanted and socially awkward movements right. And one particular form of tardive dyskinesia is tardive dystonia right. So, this is uh, this is related to tardive dyskinesia and also related to dystonia right. Again in this case there are involuntary movements of face and jaw muscles again due to uh, dopamine medication again it occurs more in women when compared with men and it occurs more in older people when compared with younger people. Um, in some cases it also happens as a result of other uh, medication side effects right. So, this is tardive dyskinesia. Then another disease is chorea that are dance form movements or dance like movements related as a after effect of a rheumatic fever or post streptococcal autoimmune disease right. So, this is named after uh, Thomas Sydenham right. It is a relatively temporary condition. So, uh, fortunately it is a temporary condition it affects striatal GABAergic neurons it happens between the age of 5 and 15 years right. What happens? Uh, what are the symptoms? Changes in handwriting, muscle weakness and unwanted or involuntary movements unfortunately this is also accompanied by frequent loss of emotional control right as a after effect so after the person survives the streptococcal um, disease then the person gets this disease then the so called uh, hepatolenticular disease or wilson's disease this happens due to uh, high deposition of copper in liver hepato means liver related lenticular means basal ganglia related right so this uh, unwanted high deposition of uh, copper in liver actually leads to a situation when the lentiform nucleus or the lenticular nucleus is uh, and its performance is affected usually the age of occurrence is between 12 and 23 years. What happens? What are the symptoms? Difficulty in speaking, excessive salivation unable to con unable to control salivation, ataxia and uh, unfortunately accompanied by mask like face. In other words, unable to express an emotion through facial uh, features right. So, facial features and expression of emotion through the face is associated with movements of relatively small muscles as I mentioned in the previous class. So, this disease leads to a situation when the people are not able to move those muscles 
when the person is uh, showing a face that resembles a mask, showing no emotion.